Hi, this is Sarah Boss, Madera County Public Health Director, and I'm here with Sergio Garcia, our safety officer here at the Department of Public Health. Um, and he has just started in this role, medical assistant in his day job right. with our clinic right. and um, an ideal person to function as our safety officer during this COVID response. And so we wanted to put a video together to provide an orientation to businesses, other government agencies who are um, trying to create the most safe environment for their business. And uh, a safety officer is really important aspect of that. So I just wanted to spend some time with Sergio, interview him about what he's been doing so that we can all learn from best practice that he's put in place. So Sergio, tell us about the duties of the safety officer during this COVID response. So one of the primary duties that I have had here during the COVID uh, crisis response has been pretty much assessing our safety here in the facility itself, uh, making sure that it is a safe workplace for everybody as well as our staff that's currently here to be um, in well enough health to continue working as well. Uh, that's one of the primary functions that I have here currently. And what are the common issues that come up? I. I would say probably the social distancing, seeing that we still have staff here. It's something that I do have to walk around uh, pretty much all day, monitor that. We still have meetings that are being held to make sure that there is, you know, they're being held in an adequate spot that social distancing can be maintained, as well as I think everybody just gets so used to working with one another that it's very common to be so close to them, showing them documents or sharing a computer screen. So finding the kind of nice way to let them know that they have to distance themselves out as well as making sure that those are taking care of themselves as well. There's a lot of new tasks for our staff members that I know they're trying to get done within a timely manner, but we have to make sure they still take their breaks, that they've taken their lunch, or even if they're feeling ill, a lot of them want to push through and continue to work because they want to do their best to help out in this situation currently. But we have to let them know a day's rest is better than losing them for a week just because they're pushing themselves a little too far. True, and then if someone does actually have symptoms of COVID, Correct. we need to send them home to isolate Absolutely. just like anyone else Absolutely. to protect um, our staff and slow the spread of COVID as well. Yes, yes. Yeah. We've been doing those checks twice a day. So it's very common for some places to do it once a day. We feel that doing it twice a day is a little bit uh, more in depth to make sure I mean, symptoms can persist at any time during the day. So we'll check them once in the morning. Uh, screen them for questions and then check the temperatures and right right around the lunch hour we'll go ahead and we'll do that once more. Great and so you know we do have an employer screening tool yes. on our website that's uh, madeiracounty.com forward slash COVID-19 and um, even if people don't have a thermometer they can still go through those questions and usually people uh, are able to do what Dr. Paul refers to as a subjective fever and talk about whether or not they're feeling feverish or have chills and that's not exactly the same as a temperature but it's pretty good and so right. um, I'd encourage employers even if you don't have a thermometer you can still use that tool and do adequate screening of your staff. Absolutely. I think um, as a director um, one of the things that I think is really important is I've given you authority <laughs> yes. right? Yes, you, you have permission to send people home if they're having symptoms yes. or if they're not feeling well or really if you've observed over several days that they're overdoing it and they really need to take a break and Absolutely. take some rest and so I think that that's an important aspect in choosing a safety officer is as the the manager or, or the director of, of your company um, to really give that authority to your, to your safety officer and of course we're in communication all day long about things that might be going on yes. and so you're not taking on that authority in a vacuum yes. but it's also really important to look for an individual and Sergio really embodies this you know he's um, he is compassionate but he's firm and he's well respected in the department people know who he is and know that he has that kind of personality he does genuinely care for people but he's he's going to push if he doesn't think that you're you're exactly giving the honest answer and he does it with me too he'll come in he'll say how are you really feeling and he can tell if i'm having um you know experiencing more stress and i need to take a break and he'll really encourage me and prompt me to use our health trail and yes. take a walk and so those are conversations you're having with me as well as with everyone else 
So, you know, Sergio has been re paying attention to details and really diligent, and those are characteristics that you're going to want to look for as you're choosing a safety officer. So, Sergio, tell us about the time requirement for this duty that you've taken on. Uh, currently, it is definitely something that is all day. It is something we want to make sure that we're monitoring. I mean, hazards can arise at any point in time. Something as minor as a cord sticking out that you didn't realize somebody plugged something in recently and it's in the way of a walking path. Uh, so we, aside from the screening, again, checking up with all the employees, making sure everybody's in a safe environment at all times, even during the lunch hour, because again, people have a tendency during that lunch break, well, let's go to the break room, let's, let's just have a, a seat here. So we've had to make some changes here and there. It was definitely a lot more stressful the very first week. Uh, there were a lot of things to assess, trial and errors when it came to the screening process, temperature checks. Um, I think with time, anybody doing this going forward, it will feel a little stressful that very first week. And then after a while, things kind of start falling into place. They become routine. More people become very um, compliant with it. They don't, they don't push back as much. Again, it becomes a norm. And some people actually eventually start, at least what I've seen here, they will come and find me the minute they do not feel well. Uh, and that's been something that's been very helpful. They see that we're taking this very seriously. It's all meant for their health, for everybody's. Um, we all have families and loved ones we want to go home to and we don't want to spread anything. So I think during the long run, everybody's come, um, pretty much come to terms with everything. And yeah, it's been a lot easier, but it is definitely all day. Yeah. Well, especially during this time. Yes. And absolutely. we have a staff of about 100 uh, people in the office. And um, that includes some other people from other departments that have come and joined us, uh, and others who have, uh, you know, gone to teleworking. And so we still have about 100 people in the building. And so I think that for some businesses that have a smaller number of staff, it wouldn't be a full time. But for us right now, right. it's been a full time yes, thing. Yes. Okay. So, what recommendations do you have? Um, for somebody who is just getting started uh, with having a safety officer, even for the business owner or as the safety officer themselves? Um, I think the best advice I could have is to communicate. Communicate with those around you, the person that's given that safety officer that power as well. Kind of bounce back and forth ideas. Uh, you helped me with the screening process as well, um, giving me ideas in regards to that and just stick to it. It's, it's going to be very different at first. It's going to be a little odd for everybody. Uh, this one person now has an authority to send somebody home and it's, you know, some may frown upon that. Again, as long as the intentions are there, that they're for the right reasons, I think everybody will be fine. But it's just sticking to the path and understanding everything that is being done is done to protect the staff and the community that may be entering this establishment as well. Um, it's also, a, if anything, uh, I know we're, we're talking a lot about uh, self-care, making sure that we take breaks, lunches, is making sure that that safety officer as well has a backup as well. They are going to go through a lot of stress in the beginning, and even as things get easier, they need to make sure they're taking their time, even rotating shifts in and out. That, um, for smaller establishments, again, it may not be all day, but it's a good idea, and you made sure that I found a backup for myself as well, so that is something that we've identified and done here as well. Well, thank you, Sergio, for sitting with me and talking about this. And we encourage everyone as, uh, first of all, essential businesses who are already open, uh, that they would identify a safety officer and um, really put those important practices in place. And then as others who are yet deemed non-essential, but hopefully will be moving into phase two and on into three and four, as we reopen our community with other businesses, that you would identify a safety officer and strive to have the most safe environment for your business and your staff. Thank you.